just hit record and I realized that my dishwasher is going so if you hear weird sound that's what it is sorry I'm gonna record now because it's gonna get real hot real soon hello everyone welcome back to my channel when he reads where I talk about books and things and today I thought I would give some love to those books that don't really get a lot of love on this channel or on any channel really that I have come across some of these are repeats for me but I'm just like shouting at you to read them and you're not reading them so I just really need to shout it out loud like more intensely so basically these are my top five underrated reads that you should read whenever you feel like it now I have a little stack down here I'm just gonna grab them in the order that they are in I <laughs> I didn't put them in like most to least or anything like that I just want to grab them in the order that they are also if you see me like a little bit not feeling my best it's just that I am not feeling my best right now and it's nothing it's just that I got vaccinated yay but I really have kind of a headache going on so anyway the first book that I have here is The Long Walk by Stephen King now The Long Walk by Stephen King is tells the story of a dystopian society where basically every year i believe it's every year um boys get to participate in this walk now this walk is as many kilometers as is necessary until all the boys are dead except one that's right they're all dead people get shot people get killed people die of the elements it's a really jarring book to read but it's a really really good book and i think this is the book that has genuinely scared me in my life i like i was reading it and i was like he doesn't have the balls to do that he doesn't have the balls to do that he had the balls to do that like i remember my heart pounding in my chest and i also think that the the really good thing about this book is that stephen king usually writes women really poorly and there are basically no women in this book so he doesn't have that crutch to go with he just has to write what he knows how to write which is men and he does it really well i think the 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 friendships in this group this is like a hunger game situation you know that none of these kids are going to make it out of life to have a friendship afterwards but they have a friendship now and i think that it's really meaningful and it's really well done and beautiful and also it just gets your heart going like i remember reading this and feeling like i was there and and there's this part i'm not gonna spoil it don't worry but there's a part where one of the characters just says like nah man i'm tired of walking i'm not gonna walk anymore and he sits down and there's a countdown for how long they can like not walk it's not like you just stop walking and automatically you get killed but i remember reading the countdown and my heart was like beating out of my chest and i was on the bus and when 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 what happened happened i was like oh. you know it was like it was it was a lot it was a lot and i really enjoyed this book it's really short and um yeah by the way you can also see this uh, as written as richard bachman which is stephen king's pen name so yeah definitely recommend the longest walk it's i would classify this as a sci-fi definitely a sci-fi because of the whole dystopian thing but um it's very low on the sci-fi and very big on the big emotions and you get attached to all these characters and that's what a good book should do you should be attached to characters or to stories and this one has it all now the next book that i'm gonna pick up i've been screaming to everyone out there to read it and i know that tori from tori moro has also been doing it but y'all haven't been reading it so i'm gonna talk about it it's do you dream of terror 2 by tammy O. Oh. this book is again a soft sci-fi i realized that i like soft sci-fi more than i look that i like um hard sci-fi but basically this book is about a group of teenagers that get chosen out of like hundreds to go to space to go to this place called terra 2 now of course we're going there because what do we do in science fiction stories we destroy the planet so we have decided to you know what we're gonna send some kids up there to this new planet and we're gonna see how it goes except there is some things that are not said some things the adults might not be telling children and also they're not really children i think they're they're 18 by the time they go up but you know 
their children for me. <laughs> and I just think that this is a beautiful story about friendship, about your drive for greatness, your ability to believe in something so hard that you just go for it. It's a beautiful written book. I do say that there is trigger warnings in this for eating disorders, suicide, and um, psychotic episodes. So if you, you are not bothered by that, please pick up this book. It's so beautiful, it's so well written, and it deserves all the praise in the world that it's gotten and that it should get. But I don't see it in everybody's TBR and it's like really wigging me out because this is like such a perfect book for booktube. It's so good. So yeah, do you dream of terror too, I tell me out. The following book is probably one of my best books of last year and I just adore this book and I haven't seen it anywhere and the only reason I read this is because I saw Oh, what's her channel name? I'll insert it up here. Um, not that you haven't been to her channel. Um, I don't remember her name. But anyway, I saw her unboxing a PR package of it on Instagram and I thought that is such a lovely cover. And then I looked it up and it was on script and I was like, okay, I'm gonna read it. And it blew my mind. And that is Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. Now, Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour tells the story of a girl, I don't remember her name, Mila. Mila um, is in the foster care system. She is with a good family, a, a nice family, but she finds out that, you know, she's aged out of the foster care system and instead of like keeping her, they're sending her away because they're, they have found a baby to adopt and they wanted a baby. So she's okay with it. She's not traumatized by it. She, it, she thought that that's what was gonna happen. And she gets sent to this idyllic farm where these people have adopted like 30 children and they also give a place for those that have grown out of the system to work and to live with as a family. However, this place is full of ghosts and the book doesn't make any like assumption that there are no ghosts. No, no, the ghosts are real. Everybody can see them. Mila can see them. The, the father can see them. Everybody can see them. And the ghosts are there for a reason. They signify something for these people. And I won't tell you what, but Mila meets a little boy whom she becomes very close with. And he starts seeing ghosts of his own. And this story is just such a beautiful story about trauma and um, getting over your trauma and also finding family when you thought there was nothing left and I just think it's such it's so beautifully written too and also can we talk about this cover this cover is everything look at that Marie Antoinette cover I just can't it's so beautiful the book is short it's it's wonderful and it really makes you think about what makes the family and it also talks about self-forgiveness you know how you sometimes beat yourself up over things that happen in the past and stuff like that well this book discusses all of that and I just think that I don't see enough love for this book I don't see it in most beautiful book books that I've bought this year you know it like this cover is just amazing the book itself is it's beautiful inside it's this lovely it's not picking up but it's like a sage color and inside you have, if, if you see in, outside, she's got her eyes closed and in the inner cover, she's got her eyes open and it's, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful, recommend it, the writing is beautiful. It reminds me, I, mean, I know I'm gonna get flack for this, but it reminds me of Oscar Wilde-ish writing where it's flowery but not overly flowery. So yeah, get on to reading Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. The next book I have is The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. I always say Simon Jimenez or Simon Jimenez but I think it's Simon Jimenez but anyway this book is actually a by a BIPOC author and it's about what is this book about this book is about basically space travel and um, there there is a woman who travels through space and of course she travels through time because you know the you, you know the, the whole time and space thing from in inception inception no not inception interstellar that i cannot explain because i'm not intelligent enough but basically the the faster you travel the less you age so when you come back people are older and she has accepted this she has accepted that she's going to live a life 
where she doesn't make any connections with anyone. That is until out of nowhere this boy appears and nobody knows where he's from, how he appeared, he appeared from like the stars and she gets tasked with taking him to the headquarters, like the main government headquarters of space <laughs> basically. I don't know what they call it but it's like the main yeah the main headquarters where all the planets come together you know it's like the UN of space and she gets tasked to taking him there because technically he belongs to them because he doesn't belong anywhere he doesn't have a passport per se but she becomes attached to this boy and his music and she wants to protect him at all cost and she's always asking after him and things happen and it's just a beautiful love story between a mother and an adopted child and I think it's very well written. You also get in here the story of the person that invented this travel and she is also I think, I think, please don't come at me if I'm wrong, I read this a long time ago, but I think she's on the spectrum and she's also queer and you get an explanation as to why she invented space travel and what it cost her really what it cost her to invent this and and why she is the way she is now so i really recommend this book it's it, i know that i'm i'm doing a shitty job of explaining it because i always suck at explaining books that involve time travel which is funny because the next book i have does involve time travel but i just love this book recommended 110 percent and i think that for those of you that are looking for a kind of weirder read but that's still full of heart and full of hope and full of like all those nice things that we want in life, I just think that this is a wonderful, wonderful read. As I said before, the next book that I have also involves time travel and that is Bitter Seeds and actually I'm gonna include just the whole milkweed, milkweed triptych here which is just um, a trilogy of this book. Now, Bitter Seeds is an amazing book and it's about, let me explain to you. In the middle of war, or at the beginning of World War II, there are two factions, of course, the Axis powers and the Allies. And the Allies quickly realize that the Axis power is using strange technology to turn humans into superhumans, you know, turn them basically into mutants. There's tele, uh, telecommu not telecommunication, telepathy, um, there is, people that can fly like hulk like beings and well their response is there's this man who knows somebody who knows that there is actual magic in the world basically you can perform magical rites but they come at a cost now every time you perform a magical spell there is blood that you have to pay. However, the blood that you have to pay, you pay it to these aliens that are using that blood to map our genome to take over Earth and basically create a massive genocide of humans, like an extinction of humans. Did I just sell this book to you? Because I just don't understand how people can like listen to that and not be like, what? I want to read that. Um, the characters are incredible. I'm, I'm, I'll be honest and I'm not a big fan of the main character but all of the supporting characters are incredible. I love the whole x men -y idea and also how they use magic and the lengths people would go during a war you know to avoid annihilation, complete annihilation. There's time travel here there, and also that I have never seen, I have never in my life seen foreshadowing like I have seen in this book. There are scenes in this book that don't make sense until you read the last book. It's like, oh yeah, this kind of makes sense because time gets distorted when you do magic and then you read the last book and it's like, oh, that's what was happening. It's it's incredible, it's amazing. Again, there is this whole parent-child love there is a uh, love between friends, a non-toxic masculinity love. I just really appreciate that book. The only, th this book, sorry, and this trilogy, the, the only thing that I don't like is that basically, again, we have that whole one woman per gang thing, you know, <laughs> like, there's ba there's only two main female characters and one of them is super powerful and the other one is just there to be the tragic love story person but other than that 
I mean, this book is amazing. It's so, so good. I recommend it to everyone that loves sci-fi and that loves fantasy. It combines sci-fi and fantasy in such a beautiful, wonderful way. I just love it. I love everything about this this trilogy. I, I, I gave away my original trilogy because I hated the ending. But then I just, I was like, why did I do that? I want to reread this so bad. So I think this is going to be one of my projects of this year to reread this trilogy because it's just so good. That's all. That's all I have to say. It's so good. The last book that I have to recommend, I could recommend 10 more, but I just wanted to keep this like a short easy video you know um, I don't have the first one yet because I'm I'm waiting for them to go on sale because I do own them in my Kindle but that is the Jacoby series by William Ritter now the Jacoby series is best described as Sherlock Holmes meets paranormal paranormal is that the show well whatever basically there's this man named Jacoby who is just a Sherlock Holmes clone and but the difference is that he has a special ability where he can see magical creatures not everybody can but he can and everybody just kind of thinks he's kind of odd but he has a knack for solving crimes but they always just like he's like well it was a pixie and it's like no it was a disease or something you know like they try to make it so it's not magical but actually it's really magical now one thing that I love about this book is the female characters. The female characters are incredible. We have two powerful, powerhouse, amazing characters that are friends with each other. They don't fight over men. They don't, they're not interested in the same man. They're just best friends. And one of them happens to be a ghost haunting the house they live in. Really, you are doing yourself a disservice not reading this book. This book is not going to give you anything like new and exciting in terms of like in-depth thought of the human condition. But it's definitely going to give you a good time and it's going to make you feel good. The ending of this book, of not this book, of this quartet because there's four of them, um, made me cry like a little like a little girl like I was like sobbing so yeah that's basically this book I love it I love it to pieces and I can't wait to own the whole collection because I love it I do want to say an honorable mention to the disasters by NK England now I don't want I didn't want to go into it too much because Jesse from the bookish mom who's channel I will link up here actually whose video I will link up here already did a whole video about that book and I think she expressed it better than I ever could but basically in case you haven't seen the video and you you don't want to click it's a story about I, I have my book somewhere I was looking for it to show it but I don't know where it went but basically it's about a group of misfits who are washed out from this space academy and then the space academy gets attacked and they get blamed for it but what really is amazing is the representation in this book we have a trans girl we have a bisexual boy we have a gay boy we have a girl on the spectrum or no sorry she's not on the spectrum she suffers from an anxiety disorder we have a hijab wearing amazing um female character it's just got everything you want in it and it's fun it's fun it's exciting and also it it talks about the dynamics of falling in love during war but it doesn't do that whole thing where it's like oh my god we're getting shot at it's time to get to, it's time to kiss each other you know it's time to get it on it's they don't do that in fact they they poke fun of that and i just think that that's like a really cool concept Anyway, my my basic my dishwasher is telling me it's time to go. So without any further ado, if you're new to my channel, please do stay a while. I talk a lot about books, especially science fiction books and books that nah, not everybody reads, but that's okay. And yeah, without anything else left to say or without any further ado, I never know what to say when I say this. With that being said, I bid you adieu with a friendly reminder that I post three times a week and that I appreciate each and every single one of you and that I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye.